Hello, everybody. Hello, Questers. How's everybody doing tonight? Here we are, October 25th, 2023, Wednesday night podcast, getting real close to that opening two hour premiere of The Curse of Oak Island. Hope everybody's having a good week so far. I am busy, busy, busy. And from Canada, the woman from Ontario. Here's Judy. Hello, Judy. Hello, John. Hi, everybody. Good to be here, as always. And I am looking forward to two weeks from tonight. There it be. There it be. Two weeks from tonight. I hear an echo, Judy. I'm sorry, John. Got it. I forgot it. I got it now. All right, let's say her lows here. Hello, John and Gloria in the house. There's Luann. She's always waiting for us, Judy. Yes, she is, isn't she? <laughs> uh, I think they all are. Hello, Scott. There's Renee. Getting closer and closer and closer. Don't forget, put in hashtag hat if you haven't won a Quest baseball cap. You're eligible to win one. Wherever you are in the world, I got you. There's David. Hello, David. There's the pirate. How you been, pirate? Hello, Henry. Everybody can see me. Everybody can hear me and Judy. Did I see uh, Sydney yet? Uh, Judy. Yep, she's been on and she can hear us both. There she is. I gotta look back at I'm so used to now looking at um the stream yard. I see her over there with the turn neck. There she is. Hello, Stacy. <laughs> Hello, Sydney. Jeff M's in the house. Hope your wife's doing fine. There's Stacy. Our first quest, Holy Muyan supporter. I thank her so, so much. All righty. Glory's on the beam. Jeff says she's doing good. Very good. Very good. We send her positive vibes from our group, uh, Jeff. Can't go wrong with that. Jeff. Can't go wrong yep. with that. Sure can, John. And um, I also want to uh, say a little thing about uh, our main man, the professor, the historian, uh, Daniel Spinal, who lost his sister uh, last week due to sickness. And uh, so very sorry for your loss and a family member, as we all know. And uh, you got to support Daniel. Whatever you need, you know that. Our thoughts are with you, Daniel. Hello, Jan. How are you? Wait for people to come in. I sort of get like these little hellos and thank yous in before the 7 o'clock hour, but sometimes we get right into it. It's not even 7 o'clock yet. Some days we can't even get things in, you know? Right. Exactly, John. Yeah, it just depends on what we got going. There's Anthony, the new hat winner. Yep. <laughs> now that hat looked good on Anthony. I saw his picture. Yep. Hello, Roxy. Glad you can make it. Yep. Of course, I always got to ask him, Judy. Well, can I post your picture, please? And if not, well, whatever. Some people don't like regular photographs and pictures. And some people think, what do you mean? You're going to see all these people in the world? No, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some don't mind it. Thank goodness, because then we get to see them. 
Yep, there's Anthony right there. She he says, Thank you, Judy. <laughs> but uh I'm hearing clicks or something on your phone, uh, Judy. I'm hearing something. Are you? You guys hearing right. anything on Judy's end or is she coming across okay? You're a little bit garbled, John, but Th that's gotta be you. Okay, I don't know what it is then. All right. You want to try to call me back? Yes, I'll, I'll give that a try. All right, try, okay. to, try to call me back and we'll see if it works. Because I called you and maybe something's goofy from here back. It was okay with you oh. back here. Okay, call me right back. Okay. All right, bye-bye. Judy's going to call back. That Canadian... Connection, you know what I mean? Yep, Scott, you can hear the clicks. All righty. Hello. Oh, that sounds better. Okay. Better. All righty. Little tech glitches. We don't know until we go live, guys, until you can hear us and see us and all the rest of the baloney that we go through on a yearly basis. Yep, it seems that way. If there's a gadget around, it doesn't like me usually. Yeah, but see, I called her this time, guys. So maybe that's connection from the USA to Canada. So this is the best we can do. Cindy says it sounds good. Yep, you sound fine now, but you were garbled before. All righty. Very, very good. Right, let me get a couple of things up. I thank a couple of people here, Judy. Hold on. Okay. We always got to thank uh, Daniel Spino and Charlotte when they put this blog up. Please support them on the Oak Island Competitum, the new edition blog that they started up. Like I said, very good interviews on here. Very good, interesting facts that are on here. And also links to all these guys that sell all these books that are recommended by Daniel and uh, Charlotte. You just go there, hit the link, buy what you like. And uh, I support them a thousand percent. Gives us lots of reading. Hmm. Gives us something to do, John. Yep. Right. And here, go see my friend Tony Sampson. Tell him Johnny sent you. I haven't heard a thing, Judy, on the 2024 tours for the island. I haven't heard one little peep. Like I said in the last podcast, you would think. They would know by November so people can plan accordingly taking vacation time, but I haven't heard a peep. And I haven't seen anything either, John, so maybe they don't know yet. Yep, and uh, if not, at least uh, set up uh, a hotel and go with the tour with uh, Tony Sampson around the island and tell them Johnny sent you. It's a beautiful area, and there's lots to see out there. Yep. And here's the hat somebody's going to win tonight. And we'll be on November 1st, next Wednesday, for a podcast. I don't know what we're going to talk about. I hope they have a show next Tuesday to talk about something. Otherwise, it'll be the shortest podcast you guys ever saw. It might be a quicker of a quickest quest podcast november 1st wednesday judy will be with me uh for a podcast at 6 45 p.m eastern time and uh then we'll only have six days to go for the two-hour premiere guys when david will have to celebrate your party <laughs> here's a couple of things that i found out on November 7th, a little bit of description. It says, as Rick and Marty Lagina and their team relaunched their quest, I like that, to solve the Oak Island mystery, they make a number of the most historic discoveries ever unearthed in North America. That's pretty strong wording. It's a lot of strong that, wording for wood, you know what I mean? It sure is. That gives me some hope, boy. <laughs> There's something really good. 
Then on the 14th, which I posted in uh, on Facebook, where uh, Scott Clark talked about William Flips. And the team continues right, yeah. to chase a tunnel that may run directly below the garden shaft into the baby blob where tests reveal high traces of silver and gold artifacts discovered on lot five. So just a strong connection to privateer Sir William Phelps. So take a look at that. Hello, Hook. Kitty's on the house. Hello, Hook. I hope you're doing okay. That's on the 14th. They get a little description of what they're going for here. You know, Judy? Yes, it, it, it is helpful. Then on the 21st, it says, while the team tracks the mysterious tunnel towards the baby blob, Lot 5 continues to deliver when Rick and Gary discover an unusual artifact marked with the same Roman numerals found in the U-shaped structure in Smith's Cove. Very, very interesting. Yes, for sure. Wow. You shape. Remember those uh, Roman numerals on them big beams? I do. I can clearly see them in my mind. Hello, Becky. You're with us. We're on. You know, always got to thank for the season of 2003, Muyan, Osprey Muyan. I thank him so much. Yes, for sure. Also, my YouTubers have been with me for now years. It seems weird, but we've hit 1.542 million views on YouTube, uh, Judy. That is just amazing. I read that earlier today, and I, I, it just stuns me. Hello, Cynthia. Now, that's not Facebook. That's not Instagram. That's not those podcasters on uh, Spotify. That's just YouTube. Wow. Wow. So somebody likes us. Yeah, thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> These are the YouTubers that give us support on a monthly basis. Without them and certain individuals that contribute to keep this channel going, it's just unbelievable. We want to thank Stacy Beck, even though she's looking to win a hat with her membership. In 30 days, she automatically gets a free hat. So I wanted to tell cool. Stacy that and thank her so much for her monthly contribution to uh, the Quest uh, podcast. Uh, I want to thank uh, Jupiter for his rejoin, and Mark, and Sandra, and Becky, and Wayne, and oh my lordy, 40, holy moyan! There's Dee Dee with a super chat. Unbelievable, Dee Dee. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dee Dee. She's a sweetheart. <laughs> Unbelievable. We had Sandra, Becky, Wayne, Alina, David, Nelson, Paul, Carol, Virginia, Gary, Rebecca, Caroline, Barbara, Starlene, Jeff M. Mark, Sandala Ray, Roxy, Joanne, and Hardaby on that support. I'm still looking for Mark Johnson. If you hear this or see this whenever, email me at thequestofoakisland at aol.com. You earned a hat for being a member, a Marshall member, for 25 months. So when you hit that 24th month, free stuff's coming your way. So let me know. Hello, hobo. And Judy, she's on the phone. Thank you so much for what you're doing, how you contribute, uh, Judy. I thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome, John. It's fun to be here. Well, uh, Daniel hasn't been in. I don't blame him if he's, if he's not. Um, he knows he's got other things he has to do. So take your time. Uh, you have our support, uh, Daniel. <clears throat> I want to thank all my moderators. Tammy, she's doing good. Judy, Daniel, Starlene, Kathy, and Tanya from Portugal. Also on the YouTube side, Jeff M. and Gloria. 
Thank you so much for what you do. And our lifetime contributor, Chris Dona. I got to thank my main members. They all come from the Quest of Oak Island Facebook group for about $400, $400, 400 uh, members away from 70,000. We're live on Facebook and YouTube. And our other platforms are sometimes I download to Twitter, uh, Discord, Instagram, not much on Twitch, not much on Rumble. And also to the members on Spotify for the pet podcasters around the world. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio Podcasts, Spotify, Pandora, and Amazon Podcasts. We're getting up to about 37,000 plays, Julie. Oh, John, that's great. Oh, wow. So we had a little bit of information on the descriptions of what are coming up. So I thought that was pretty cool. Yes. It gives us an idea of what, we're, what we have ahead of us. Yep. Yep, you know, Scott Clark really did that theory about the silver. So if they find something on lot five that connects that silver somehow, that's exciting. It is. It, it darn well is. I Like I said last year, I still think there's something on lot five. Hmm. All right. You guys ready? We don't have any videos. We don't have any action. Just like, you know, I play the uh, last video that we got and um wait for the next one the next summer if we have a season 12 13 14 or whatever we're doing here judy <laughs> who knows john I i'm lost we'll go with no we'll go with the flow is what we'll do mm. all right this is what they presented uh yesterday it's all up for discussion It was the Oak Island top 10 moments from season 10. This is all we got to go by. There was a couple of screenshots in the beginning, Judy, that I wanted to put in before they got to uh, number 10. So we'll go through those. Okay. Of course, they're showing and pushing the gold signature. Hello, Henry. And... um. They're pushing the old gold in the shaft, Judy. Right. I figured they would do that, John. Hmm. This they even showed. Hello, Mark. Thank you so much. If you like the channel, please like the channel, subscribe. Please support if you can. Every penny helps. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mark. And they showed this, and I'm going, oh, we never found out about this dig, uh, Judy. No, we did not, and I'm anxious to find out what it is. I think that was, uh, they were looking for the the flood tunnel coming in from Smith's Cove to the money pit, you know what I mean? Okay, gotcha. All right. I mean, I'm only guessing, but that hole is awful big. I'd say that's 20 by 20 at least. Yes, it is big. And this is when uh, Emma found uh, the gold in the wood. Marty says we're getting closer and closer. <laughs> We've done a hell of a lot of exploration on this island. No kidding. <laughs> really? <laughs> 11 years of Swiss cheese and every kind of scanner you can imagine. We're lucky that island's still floating. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. And here's Maddie. But I wasn't really looking at Maddie. I was looking for the background. As you know, my eyes fly all over the place, Judy. Yes, you never miss a thing. But I really didn't see anything that we didn't see when they taped this whenever. Okay. All right, number 10 was Royston Cave. Mm. Yeah, Luann, Robert Young owned it. He bought it off of Fred Nolan. Luann, I just saw that statement now. So Fred Nolan and 
Robert Young were tight. Welcome to the Templar Initiation Chamber. A lot of drawings on those walls. In the old days, it seems that's all they wanted to do was draw on rocks. I would think of something better to do than doing all these designs on rocks all day long. You know what I mean? I agree. I do. But hey. I have to admit, they're, they're interesting. Yeah. Hey, George. Yeah, what are you doing? Hey, let's get another piece of rock over here in the dirt. Let's go make some designs on this other rock. and Let's just scrape it off and make designs on this rock. Hey, that sounds like a good idea. What are these people <laughs> out of their minds? <laughs> they didn't have TV, John, nor did they have Quest of Oak Island. No, you're right. <laughs> Let's go make these things on rock on rock. It's the last thing I would want to do. And there's Gretchen. What did you guys think of that? Well, it was certainly interesting, but I don't think they found anything extremely interesting that would help the search at all. Right. The 1347, then they try to tie it into Xena's map. That's the, yeah. that's the only thing that interested me, sort of. But other than that, I have no idea. Uh, Stacy says, what's interesting is that the markings on these walls match many street pavements in Jerusalem. Really, Stacy, that's interesting. Yep. There's Stacy's statement. Henry's, what did Henry say here? He goes back to the order of the Templars, the Knight Templars, who dedicated their life to protect important relics in Christianity and the Ark of the Ten Commandments. You're correct, Henry. You're very good. Yeah, Renee, I see you. I covered for you. And there's where it's 1347. Now, some people say it's a date. Some people say it's a distance. Holy Muyan Lordy 40. I don't know which way to go with this map. You know what I mean, Judy? I don't either, John. Sometimes I, I think that it's the real thing and another times I'm not sure. And it hasn't led us any anywhere in particular, has it? Let's think of this, Judy. Except for all the books we read and the theories that are out there. What proves right now, October 25th, that we know from 11 years and prior history that the Templars were even on Oak Island. We, no, you're right. We have no real proof at all. That's what I dig for. I don't know. We have some interesting uh, drawings and so forth that perhaps they could have been, and, and Zena certainly believed they were there. But again, there's no real proof. Yep. And then this damning clue, they really didn't show us much of that uh, German uh, engineer, what, the 3D scanners, and that was pretty interesting. Yes. Hopefully they'll show us more. Yup, Jan, we don't know. We're at the sacrifices of the editors, as you know, Judy. You've got the production and the TV show sh driving the advertising dollars, and you got us, the treasure seekers, that want to see something from way back when, you know? Right, exactly. Yeah, there's not uh, much con control over what the, the production company shows. They do it all. If I see another Medicare, Medicaid commercial, I'm going to throw up. <laughs> and this is what they found, the 3D imaging of what kind of wall there can be when they looked on the north side of the, uh, or the end side of the swamp, Judy? Yes. Oh, John. I can't help but wonder if they found something there. 
The only thing I can remember is this. Yeah, I can remember the oil, you know, oil on the stones, oil on the on the wood. Remember that, Judy? Right. Yes, I do. What is that? And uh, we never got a test on that oil. No, they didn't, did they? I don't know. Still, I'm still doing question, guys. At 11 years in, I'm still doing questions. Can you imagine it? <laughs> and you will be till the end, John. <laughs> Sorry to say, but you will be. Yep. They said oil or creosol. They said it was oil. Okay. For, the only thing they put oil on wood for is to protect the wood so it wouldn't rot in the old days. That's about all I know. We're on ships. Right. They did not. Uh... For waterproofing. So hopefully that means that's off of the ship. Mm. And here's for Luann. This is Robert Young, who owned Lot 5. And before him, uh, Fred Nolan owned a Lot 5. That's as far as my brain goes back to. After that, you're going to have to look it up on the maps. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we need to know be beyond that, John. <laughs> At this point. And there's for Luann. He bought it from friend Nolan in 1996. Did some discoveries on there. He had a bunch of discoveries on his webpage, uh, Judy. Yeah, yes, they said I never did see it, John, but I have heard he did. Yep, Jan, we don't know what's uh, show worthy or not. Like I said, our hands are tight as far as that goes. Lot five's got that 13 foot pit we got to hear about yet. I don't know if we are, but that's the main thing to find, right? And I think they had 47 flags on that lot when I heard Gary say that a long time ago. So I don't know what they're finding, what they're not finding. And if they stretch it out to 20 seasons, we'll go a little bit at a time, Judy. There you go, John. Obviously, they did, from what you read tonight about um, one of the coming shows. They did find something on Lot 5. Yeah, yeah. Here's what they're talking about the show when they just purchased Lot 5. The number 7, the Lot 5 coin, the Roman coin, but yet Robert didn't find this on his lot you know what i mean i can't understand if he did metal detecting and uh he didn't want to disturb and dig up the whole lot five like the rest of the team because he wanted to preserve his lot five how does these things not get found when he was searching you know yeah you have to wonder that don't you unless he just didn't do a thorough job <sighs> who knows and there's the piece. And I put that in his hand and showed you guys just to show how big the thing is. You know what I mean? Wow. It really is small, isn't it? Mm. Hello, we are watchers. Where the hell you been? And there it is. Yep, Gloria. Yep. It's the, it was... Uh, Put up there on his website. A lot of stuff. And he's saying definitely the style is from 300 BC. Hope you're feeling better, Neil. Everybody's been getting sick lately. It's not even the COVID, Judy. I don't know if it's the flu. Who the heck knows? Yeah, who knows, John? Change your weather. That, yes, that could be. Yeah, going into the winter months. Everybody gets sick. Number six, Bromancy and the H plus O stone. I was always looking for the actual stone before they blew it up. And I don't know if this is the actual stone. So you guys, I got a project for you guys. By next Wednesday, see if you can find the H O stone 
before that they blew it up looking for the treasure underneath. Yeah, let's hope they took some pictures of it. And this is where they went to Italy in their church, showing the four dots on the cross. Now, I had a picture of this. Is this on Oak Island? Is this the boulder before they blew it up? I can't verify it. So, and you know, the guys got their non disclosure agreements as the season is in filming. They really can't say much. So, I was wondering if this is the boulder, uh, Judy. Boy, John, I honestly don't know. I don't remember seeing this before. Yeah, I think it's the overtone stone. Yeah. But I don't think there's any pictures of the H2, HO stone before it blew up. I think there's no photographs at all. Right. I don't remember ever seeing it. So that would be a catch if we can find one of those, you know what I mean? It really would, wouldn't it? It's too bad they blew that up like they did. Well, mm. you know, you see all these markings on this rock. Well, it's. Right below this rock are uh, two million pounds of gold. You're going to blow the thing to smithereens. Right, exactly. And of course, we got this here Templar gold that they put in as a theory, which I say, well, he's connected to the show, so he's got a little pull. Right. Exactly. Well, maybe they'll talk about that more this season. The upper knee, H.O. Stone turned vertically, could be something else. David, yeah, I got to find out what that stone is that we found through the drone video, and they can't say anything about anything, so I can't get no explanation. So it's all on us to surmise what the heck is going on, unless it comes on the show, and then we'll find out. But until then, all lips are sealed. And number five, there we go to the garden shaft, which I'm thinking about what else can they push, Judy? We're only in the garden shaft in lot five. That's it. Where else are we? Nowhere else. Right. As of right now, they've spent a lot of time in the uh, swamp this summer. So that will give us something um, this coming season. But you're right. That's all we got. You know, they only can show Fred Nolan's peninsula digging for the metal anomaly or metal box. How many scenes can we see them digging that out uh, in the swamp to keep it going? You know what I mean? Right. Right. Exactly. We, we don't have Smith's Cove. We don't have no other dig sites. And Dumas is underground. How much can we see? I don't know. It's going to be very interesting where they're going to pull a lot of this information on, not unless they're going to have a ton of researchers on, a ton of people from Europe doing all kinds of theories. But that's what we had last year, you know what I mean? We want answers. Right, exactly. I'm hoping this tunnel that they have found brings us some answers. But to have a full season... I have no idea how they can pull a full season on what we saw with the drone videos. We got the swamp on the peninsula now. No boat, no nothing, just on the peninsula. And uh, go from there. Right, John. <laughs> yeah, some of the shows might be pretty boring. <laughs> Ashley, I, I, you got to like Ashley. Unless they pull a ship out of the swamp, I'm not interested. <laughs> Ashley. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> We're all with you, Ash. We're all with you. <laughs> but for the new members and for new people watching the show, it's all new to them, you know what I mean? Right, exactly. Now they went 82 feet. All right. Well, they got a permit. We know they dug a lot deeper. How far did they go? Did they go 20 feet and then went uh, 
horizontal? Did they go five feet? Obviously, if that signal was in two feet of water when Gary's metal detector went off, you wouldn't have to dig far to get that beeper going of what that was, Judy. No, for sure, John. Yeah, I'd like to know exactly what uh, they find under that water. What what did he find there? Right, if it was an old pipe. Because they said if, when you go below the 82 feet, that's where all the previous people in the shift drop things. Hammers, screwdrivers, nails, you know, as they did it in the old days, the bottom of the pit. That's where all the stuff would be. Right, exactly. You know, and then when they filled it back up or filled back up on its own, everything settles to the bottom. You know what I mean? Yes. Uh, yes, it does. So who knows what's under there? So we got to see how much farther they went from 82 or they, or how they all of a sudden said, well, we went 10 feet because at the 93, the, at the 193 foot point, Judy. Right. Holy Muyan said <laughs> that there's anomalies at 193 feet below the garden shaft. Hmm. They could be voids. I showed them in my last podcast. They could be voids. They could be whatever. You know what I mean? Right. It's, it's hard to say. But I'm wondering if that tunnel does hook up to the garden shaft somehow. Well, Henry, they put this waterproofing muck on the walls. Obviously, they pump it out and put this muck. That's how they did this 82-foot deep shaft because I think they hit water at 40 feet here. So there's no water at 82 feet. So whatever the waterproofing they pump in, as they go down, it seals the walls. You got that, Henry? It's almost like uh, you see that styrofoam stuff? That comes out of the can. Yeah. That's what it reminds me of. <laughs> yeah. Me too, John. Mm. Okay, Tammy, Scott. Uh, says, oh, oh. Tammy says, wasn't choice drilling not too far from the garden shaft? And you're right. They were not far away. Right. They weren't and even... they found, found the tunnel. Right, John? Found the tunnel. They haven't found anything yeah, they... yet. Oh, okay. I thought they... Had found a tunnel. That's what they're looking for now, Muyan's tunnel, or a collapsed tunnel, but we don't know which one it is. Okay. Hello, Franklin. Thanks for coming in. And then when we got the Muyan technology, they're looking for that tunnel. That's why we see Choice Drill not even near the baby blob. You know, it's more down lower. It's not even near the baby blob that's up on top. Right. Hmm. So... And this is where Emma, at 50 feet now, found gold in the wood, embedded in the wood. Now, why would gold only be at 50 feet? It doesn't make sense, does it? Gold's heavy. Even the speculators are heavy. If there's water moving. Why didn't they find anything at 82 feet on the wood samples? Only at 50 feet, there was gold embedded in the organic of the wood. Very strange. Could the, water, could the water have gone that high and the gold be in the water? Well, I thought the water table was at 40 feet. So that's only within oh. 10 feet of where the water table is. You know what I mean? Right. Okay. So the tide coming in and out, the tide coming in and out, up and down, fill it, don't fill it, fill it, fill it. All that action over the years would be at that level, you know? Right. Hmm. Hello, Oscar. Thanks for joining us. Number four, the Camaro Caves. Hello, David. This was interesting, but it really didn't hold my interest that much because uh, what was it? One chamber in here looked like the 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 cross, I guess. Right. Yeah, there wasn't a lot. They certainly are some caves set up for sure, but uh, I just don't think there was much to uh, lead to Oak Island. No, this really didn't float my boat. It was a good filler 
Guys, I'm sorry. I tell it the way it is. What is David saying here, Judy? <laughs> so if something was used to dig and leach out into treasure, it would dissolve the gold into the water. Depends the quantity. Depends how much. Mm, there's Scott. Scott's in the house. He's not cruising. Uh, hi, Scott. I don't know, David. So as far as this place, it didn't flow my boat, guys. Um, I have no idea. My own personal opinion. This thing, the whistler, that they say is a barter token. Oh, man. Daniel went in depth on this thing. Yep, they did, didn't they? Oof. We call it the, the whistle. Very good, Oscar. Somebody agrees with me. But how they analyze this stuff with the ablation, uh, Judy, they both came from southern France. Yeah. Unbelievable. It is, and it's interesting for sure. Unbelievable. Renee says gold is insoluble in water. Yeah, just like the pirate shipwreck. You see gold, the gold is right there. You know what I mean, Judy? Right. Exactly. I think even if there's specks of gold, even on all these gold shows, once they swish away all the sand and everything, still the specks of gold are gold, right? Yes, I agree. Yeah. So I don't think they break down to nothing, not unless they're an acid or something, right? Right. Yes. Mm. But then I'm not no gold expert. I'm certainly not either. No. Number two. Well, I don't even know why this is number two. Them going down the tunnel. What's this got to do with the top ten? You know what I mean? True. That's true. <laughs> I'm going, okay, you guys bought the island. You guys invested all this money. Well, that's your goal, to go down in these things. It's a number of one and two for you guys, but I don't think it's uh, anything special to us that, sure, if you got this on your land, you'd want to go down in your land. Right, and find out what's there. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. As far as making top ten, uh, this doesn't float my boat either. No, I, I don't get that one. But you know what I'm saying, Judy, right? Oh, well, I do, Yes. Um, yeah, it didn't lead us anywhere, this this one at all. It just fulfilled their dream. That's about it, to go underground at the money pit. Yeah, you know? which, yeah which they did. There's David. I'm not no chemist, but uh, he knows what he's talking about here, I guess. It isn't unless it's chemically dissolved. Usually, industrial miners use cyanide, oh, that sounds good, to dissolve gold into water, then use zinc reaction to draw out the gold. Didn't they use mercury to draw out gold out of uh, soil, uh, David? I was thinking of mercury, uh, Judy. Yes, and they have found some, haven't they? I think when I saw... Parker or something, when he went to the Congo or something, uh, they showed the people uh, putting uh, mercury into some things in a pan or something, and the gold got separated somehow. I don't know. I'm just saying what my brain's saying, guys. And he believes in Oak Island since he was a little boy. Yeah, we got that, Rick. We got it. I'll find something, though. Yes, please. 
as a little boy, I dreamt of treasure. And he keeps on telling us, Judy, he would not cross the causeway if he didn't believe that something is still there. Yes, he has said that several times. So we have to trust yeah, but, that he will find something. But if you're a dreamer, you'll never change that opinion. I mean, Marty, you know, the money man and like me, you know, show it to me. My, Give me something in my hand. You know what I mean? Show yeah. me something. Then you got your brother. Well, yeah, there's something here and it's not in the right spot. We're in the wrong spot. Blah, blah, blah. That could go on until you're 90 years old. It very well could. I hope it doesn't. <laughs> it very well could. I mean, it's been going on for 228 years, and these guys got 11 years of it, over a decade. There will come a point to maybe just have a, a tourist uh, attraction in some spots of the uh, the island, but not unless they're going to dig up the whole island down to 200 feet. Who knows? It's hard to know what they will eventually do, whether they'll give it up or not. You know, how many times can, like, uh, Charles say, we just haven't found the right spot yet. It's here. Yeah, it's here, all right. Yeah, he's said that many times. Oh, I heard it all the time. <laughs> I mean, you got so many scans, so much data, so much research, so many books, data overload. We don't want connections. We want something in our hand. If there's nothing in our hand, that means there's nothing there. Or find something that was there, an empty chamber or something with nothing in it or something in it to rebound off of. You know what I mean, guys? Yes, for sure, Joe. And even if they don't find a treasure, if they can at least solve the mystery, it would be great. Right. And that's all we've been hearing is that. That's the backlog of not finding anything physical. That, okay, Christopher Columbus, 1492, well, that's, that's thrown out the window. History, history, history. But part of me, treasure, Johnny, wants to see something or a relic. But in my own opinion, I think something was there and it's not there anymore, or there's something deep, so deep, that it wasn't supposed to be recovered. At this point, John, I have to agree with you on that. Maybe this year, maybe, but I say that every year. And Chris says, I don't want to drill to re repeat. I hear you, but I'm just saying, there's going to come a time that that'll happen, I mean, I'm in it to the end like you guys, but uh, as long as they get their 2.7 million viewers every Tuesday, nothing's going to change. Because if they find something, could that be the end? No, if there's multiple treasures, they can keep on going just like the guys do down in, the, in Florida, finding the pirate treasures. They find one boat, they find one treasure, they find another treasure. You know what I mean? It can be a continuous thing if they know multiple treasures if so said, are on the island. Hello, right, Peter. John, yeah, like, we don't know, do we? Hello, Peter. You're never late to the party. We're on the internet forever, me and Judy. <laughs> and the number one, the Garden Shaft's greatest hits. And don't forget, guys, when you're seeing all this and hearing all this, just think what the story guy's trying to steer us to. Gold, treasure, <laughs> Templars, or just information. Nothing physical, but all kinds of information to scramble our brains even more, you know? Right, exactly. Yeah, there certainly isn't something to hold in the hand. Stacy, we're all getting older. I'm 11 years older since we've been doing this. <laughs> Hard to believe, isn't it? Oh, my lordy, 40. Holy mooyan. Yeah, if you see a picture of Marty and Rick when they first started the show to now, the difference is unbelievable. They're, it's wearing down on them. I know Marty's bought a house up there. 
So he's not going to buy uh, Dan's house. Uh, I don't know about Rick. He's a strange fellow. I don't know what he does, but I'm, I'm sure I didn't hear anything about buying a house. I've heard he leases a house up there because he's got other interests in Michigan. But uh, Marty did buy a house, not on Oak Island, but close to Oak Island. I know that for a fact. So you want to buy Dan's house for $2 million? Go ahead. Well, no, that's a little too much. They said, well, some 10 feet below the bottom of the garden shaft or some kind of action. So I hope it's not a big letdown, you know what I mean? I hope it isn't either. We've had that happen other years. Hopefully there is something there. But if they don't pump whatever the garden shaft has, Judy, what do we have? That's my whole question is, you know what I mean? Right. Hashtag hat, Peter. That's in the stream yard. You got to go to stream yard to type it in. You got to let them use your profile picture and your name. That's all they use. You go hashtag hat. And after this, presentation i just hit the random generator and that's it but it's only on Streamyard's uh place because Streamyard does the giveaway not facebook got it peter thank you and here's where they found gold signatures where the red dots are way up there is the bobby baby uh blob Hey, Scott, what's under the blue tarp? Well, who the heck knows? <laughs> right, Scott. There you go, Gloria. Thank you. And there's uh, Gary. I couldn't get the flash out. I says I wanted to get Gary saying something when he got down the ladder, but look at that big flash in front of his face. Sorry about that, guys. Oh, Oh, hey, that's okay. Oh, my God. There. This is fantastic. Okay, Gary. Because <laughs> you're down in the bottom of a hole. Yep. And it made it for one Bobby Dazzler of a moment, Maddie said. <laughs> and he says it's a non ferrous. Yeah. And it's a screaming large. Hit now. See, you, can you feel the pump going on? The hook, yeah, Kathy. You feel the hook coming on? <laughs> They're pumping this gold signature, yeah, Peter. You, you did good. I see it. They're pumping the shaft. I just hope they don't let me down. That's all I'm saying. Yes, I agree with you on that. It's a screaming hit. Unbelievable. Like I said, me and Judy will be on November 1st, Wednesday, the next live podcast at 6.45 p.m. Eastern Time. See what we can do. If not, we'll just have a call-in show. If not, we'll put something together because then after the first, six days after the first, guys, we get busy. Yes, we do. First night's going to be very busy. Yupper, yupper. All righty, well. Go ahead, Judy. I will have two hours of synopsis to do, guys. You got it. Get ready. Get practicing. <laughs> I guess I better. Yep, you never know, Henry, what we're going to find, or if anything. But all their scans and digging, 3D, holy muon, which was supposed to be the big thing to point out something and go right after it, muon showing this thing is right there, GPS, and there was going to be no caissons. Rick said he would mine to these places, Judy, you know what I mean, like tunnel mine to it. Yes. So we're with them. Yes, that would be interesting if they 
did uh, tunnel mining. That's what they said they were going to do. Good. I hear you, Peter. All right. We got uh, 13 entries. Hashtag hat. This is about all I got for tonight. We got a couple of descriptions of some shows. Information's coming slow. We got the uh, November 7th, it's called On the Money. November 14th, it's called Heavy Lifting. November 21st, it's called Taking Their Shot. And November 28th, it's called Sheer Mystery. Don't forget, November 7th is from 8 to 10, and drilling down in the beginning which is called a back to the hunt. That's all the information I got for you guys right now. Anything new, like I said, I'll be posting it. Hit that notification bell because we'll be posting a lot of short videos, my 40-second videos on uh, things that are uh, in value for us on the quest of Oak Island. I thank you so much, guys. And um, I guess we got 13 um, entries, Judy. Good. Good. Good luck, everybody. Yeah, and these are for people that have not won a hat before. Give everybody a chance. And for some reason, if my name comes up, you know, the Quest of Oak Island, obviously uh, I'm not going to win myself a hat. But sometimes when I even put hashtag hat in, I throw it in there. <laughs> <laughs> so how did I get my name in there? Hello, Veal I have no you know, and the only way you get it in is by printing out hashtag hat. So today I just kept on saying it, and Gloria Gloria keeps on putting the uh, the link up, and so does Jeff. So I thank them also. Good. All right, here we go. Let's get this draw going, Judy. Okay, Johnny. I didn't screw it up last time, right? I did good last time. You did. You did. <laughs> and you will tonight. <laughs> Now you curse me. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's see what we got here. And there we be, Judy. Holy crap, we got 16. Ooh. All, right. All right, we'll give it a cute couple of seconds. 16 people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We'll give another hat away on November 1st. And another hat on the uh, two-hour premiere. We usually always do that, Judy, the whole summer. And uh, getting towards the end of the summer and when the season starts getting pumped up, we give hats away. Right, yes. And I think everybody likes that. They enjoy it. 17. And don't forget, if you win the hat, please email me at questofoakisland at aol.com. I don't give your address out to nobody. If it's international, I need your phone number for some reason, stamps.com. But I don't have an international phone number. Judy, I don't know. They call you in, in Canada when you got the phone number or they call you in Europe. I don't have to have my phone number here in the USA. I have no idea, John. You know, when you get mail in Canada from the USA, do they call you? No. No, either it comes to the door or it just shows up in your uh, post office box. Hmm, because I can't even mail it. They won't even let me mail it without a number in there. Well, for goodness sakes. Yeah. For uh, international. You know, any international for me. Maybe it's stamps.com. I don't know. Okay. All right, guys, that's it. 17 seems to be the, the fi 18. Wow, well, you son of a bee. Was, <laughs> was that Oscar? Oscar, did you just do that to me? <laughs> yeah, Dave, it might be for the customs. Yeah. I didn't think about that. Customs. You know, you got to put in hat. Uh, how many? One. What's the value? Is it a gift? You know, stuff like that. Right, okay. You guys make me do a lot of work. <laughs> you come up with the ideas, though, John. Yeah. Only to be copied by the others. 
Oh, well, you did it first. Yeah. All right, guys. I'm going to go three, two, one. We got 18 in there. We started at 13. So at least we got five more people in there that have not won a hat before. Good. And good luck, everybody. All right. Here we go again. Not unless it changes to 19. All right. Thank you, Peter. Here we go. Three, two, one. Bingo. David Burroughs is the winner. Well, congratulations, Dave. David, you never got a hit? Hmm. Very, very good. Yes. That's great. All righty. There goes David. He is the winner. Good man, David. He's always with us. He's on the Discord. He's always uh, interacting with me. Fantastic. And don't forget, Tuesday, when the show starts, I'll be on Discord at 1015 talking on the phones. So if you guys have not joined the QOOI Discord channel, please join the Discord channel. It's free. And uh, I'd love to hear from uh hear from you we just talk up a, a storm for about 15 20 minutes before i have to download everything from a two-hour show but i'll be on for about 15 20 minutes uh, every tuesday because we do uh pre-shows uh on tuesday at 6 45 it's just me and we do the podcast with judy and all the synopsis of what happened tuesday night uh every wednesday night until the show ends you know what i mean guys all looking forward to it john i hear you all right judy we've been on for about an hour and 10 minutes we did good with a little bit of information uh that we had um it's always great to talk to all you guys and uh judy if you want to say your goodbyes and uh i'll say my goodbyes and get the heck out of here all righty hey everybody it's been fun tonight it was good to uh to be able to hear John's good voice and uh, to know that you're all out there. I'll see you next week. Uh, and I don't know what we're going to be talking about, but maybe John will have something up his sleeve. Hmm. And in the meantime, all of you, stay safe. Please come back to us. Good night, John. Okay, Judy, I'll be talking to you shortly. Thank you so much for your time and on the podcast. Yeah. Yes, sir. Good night. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Remember, members, what do I tell you all year long? Always go forward. You may get a setback in your life, but just believe in yourself. You got to believe in yourself. Believe in your dreams, no matter how old you are, for tomorrow is a never given. And as you get older and older, that is a true statement. This world is crazier and crazier and crazier. The world needs a ton of prayers. More than prayers, I don't even know if this stuff can be fixed. I just shake my head. So as my friend Jan always says, you keep smiling. You never know what that other person is going through, but be pleasant, have a great smile, and stay safe. Always stay strong as much as you can and have that positivity around you. Be positive. And you'll be a better person and you'll feel better. Just keep that positivity going in a straight line. No negativity, positivity. Thank you for joining me and Judy tonight. We'll see you next Wednesday, November 1st, 6.45 p.m. Anything comes up of value and I have to come on live or something, I will. I'll post it. Thank you so much for being here tonight. I hope you enjoyed the show. Thank you. Take care and bye-bye. <laughs>